All right, let's start. Welcome to the webinar of Foundation for Philippine Progress. You are tuning in to the second installment of our signature event series called Philippines is in the Heart. Good evening from the West Coast. Good evening from Portland. We also have people joining from all over the U.S. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pagdalo. The Rondalia music you heard playing in the background was generously donated to us by Erna Cruz Louie of the American Center of Philippine Arts based in Oakland. Maraming salamat, Erna. My name is Rosella De Leon, and I'll be your moderator for this webinar. Joining me also in different parts of our program is our volunteer staff team. They are responsible for putting together this webinar series. We have Roger Rigor, our PR coordinator. We are Roger. Um, please just wave hi so people recognize you. We also have Julian Abenoha and Ai Kalalo, our project coordinators. We also have Ronald Antonio, our marketing director. Thank you so much for putting everything together to make this event happen. And now for the virtual code of conduct. In our initial conception of this series, we had imagined that it will be held in person. We wish that we can gather in person and get to know one another. However, we recognize that these are definitely uh, trying and unprecedented times, and we're doing the best we can to stay connected. We know that this online platform might be new to some of you, so we want to go over the virtual code of conduct during our time together this evening. So first, Please rename yourself with your name, city, and organization from which you are joining us today if you are part of an organization. For example, um, you have here uh, Cell or Rosella from Portland, and my organization is FPP or Foundation for Philippine Progress. If you click the attendees list, you'll see that there are three dots above your name. You may click that. Click rename and that should allow you to rename yourself again if you click the attendees uh, list um, or the participants list um, there is a, a button in the bottom of the window you'll see uh, your name in that list there are three dots above your name you may click that and click redeem and that should allow you to rename yourself second please mute your phone or computer microphone throughout the webinar you are more than welcome to type your comments or questions in the chat room throughout the webinar. If you have any questions, please utilize the chat room by clicking the chat button found in the controls in the bottom of your screen. Our instructor for today will be looking at the chats throughout the webinar as you follow along the presentation. Today's webinar will be recorded and then uploaded to our YouTube page afterwards. This webinar series is brought to you by the Foundation for Philippine Progress. We are a 501c3 nonprofit organization that is dedicated to empower and engage communities in programs and projects for the Philippines to secure quality health, education, and basic human rights for every Filipino. We are based in Portland, Oregon, but we work with communities across the United States while conducting our projects and programs for vulnerable communities in the Philippines. And now to show you a little bit about ourselves uh, through this promo video, let's play the video. The Philippines, Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao, Lumad, Aita, workers, students, farmers, mothers, fathers, grandchildren, nurses, Teachers, 
doctors. Seven thousand islands without enough water. Typhoon prone. Vast and rich lands. But the people are hungry. So we've partnered with organizations in the Philippines, nonprofits, hospitals, relief organizations, to launch the Foundation for Philippine Progress. To partner with you for reunited, whole, rich Philippines. For a full life for every Filipino. I've spent the first decade after college working in higher education. But having survived numerous calamities while growing up in the Philippines, there has always been something pulling my heart to do something about it full time. The people I met in the Philippines through several immersion, solidarity, and relief missions laid the groundwork for the foundation to form partnerships with already thriving community initiatives in the Philippines that ensure that underserved and marginalized communities back home have access to basic health, education, and human rights. In October of 2018, during Filipino American History Month, we launched the Foundation for Philippine Progress. Last year, we celebrated our first year anniversary and you will see on the screen in the next slide the different efforts we've started since our founding over a year ago. Several medical and surgical missions, continuous disaster relief efforts, community education like this webinar, and many more. We are now in our second year of continuing to further our vision of a full life for every Filipino, and it is because of your support being in community with one another, that we are continually inspired to do the work that we committed to do. And now to talk about this very program, Philippines is in the Heart series, I invite Ronald Antonio. Thanks, Elle. Hello, everyone. So the seven part launch of Philippines is in the Heart, our signature series event, is carefully curated as our own contribution in keeping the Philippines alive in our hearts. We want to utilize our platform to provide current and accurate bits and pieces about the Philippine history, culture, food, language, along with the current situation on the ground. We want to maximize our platform to get together with all of you to discuss any and everything about the Philippines and be a place where we can have truthful and meaningful discussion about what is dear to us. After all, we know that even though a lot of us are not back home in the motherland, the Philippines is in our hearts. Scheduled around key historic moments, such as Philippine Independence Day on June 12th, Filipino American Friendship Day this Saturday, July 4th, and the Philippine State of the Nation Address on July 27th, this webinar series is designed to enjoin participants to learn more truths about the Philippines through the lens of historians, scholars, community organizers, and our volunteer partners for progress in the US and in the Philippines, who are doing tireless work on the ground. We name our series Philippines is in the Heart to honor and commemorate Carlos Bulasan and his work. He was a writer, poet, novelist, and a nationalist who arrived in Seattle in 1930. His story and work have made a difference in the lives of so many of us. Like so many Filipinos, Carlos Bulasan migrated to the US in search of a better life. His experiences and hardships as a new immigrant living in America were documented in his prolific writing and is best known for his novel, America's in the Heart, followed by his collection of short stories, The Philippines is in the Heart. Like Carlos Bulasan, we recognize that for a lot of overseas Filipino workers who have been living in the streets of Saudi, Lebanon, and Hong Kong because they lost their jobs due to COVID the COVID-19 pandemic, they cry for help in order to continue supporting their families back home. Philippines is in their hearts. For a lot of our Kababayans who are grieving the tragic loss of their relatives, 
who they can't even see because of the travel restrictions, we know that Philippines is in their hearts. For 100,000 Filipino seafarers who are currently stuck at sea and have been longing to go home to their families, the Philippines is in their hearts. For a lot of our Kababayans whose upbringing have been separated from the beauty of the Philippine culture and traditions and are trying to reconnect their roots through Filipino food and learning Tagalog, we know that the Philippines is in their hearts. I fell in love with our people when I went back to the Philippines in 1998 and returned with my two kids in 2013 to help with typhoon relief. I fell in love all over again when I found out that there were other Filipinos who also care about the Philippines and wanted to give back, especially when the foundation launched in 2018, a foundation that is dedicated to serving the Filipino people. And by our people, meaning the people who are neglected, disenfranchised and stigmatized by our society. The Philippines is in their hearts also. Filipino or not, born in the Philippines or not, the love for the Philippines is something we all share. Our signature event series exists to honor that. We hope that you enjoy this series that we put together for you. Thank you, Ron. During the launch of this series last week, we started a raffle. All the participants of the webinar had a chance to win some prizes that bring us closer to the Philippines. We have Carlos Bulusan books, Filipino cookbooks, traditional Filipino textile, Tagalog English dictionary, traditional Filipino accessories, etc. To participate in the raffle, we had encouraged participants to make a donation of at least $5 to support our work. From last week, there were donations that came in who will be uh, now part of this raffle. If you are so inclined, please share in the chat that you plan on donating any amount that is at least $5, and our staff will jot down your names to include in the raffle today. Your names will be in the basket for the rest of this five of, of this seven part webinar series. So for today's event, we will be picking the winners before we wrap up for the night. And now to start us off with today's event, which is Wikang Kayumangi, Learning and Appreciating Tagalog, I'd like to introduce our educator for the night. Roger Rigor, as most know him, is a retired high school math and science teacher in the Seattle Public Schools with more than 20 years of teaching experience at alternative programs, notably the Ida D. Wells School of Social Justice at the University of Washington. He and a humanities mentor or colleague started that college preparatory school for the underrepresented students of color back in 1997. Before relocating to Seattle, Roger was involved in the Philippine music industry in the late 70s. Upon graduating from college, he became project manager for a foundation that ushered in what is now termed as Original Filipino Music or OPM. You will also probably recognize him as a band member of BSC and Company, a Filipino disco group formed in the late 70s in Manila, Philippines. And just two days ago, the board of directors of uh, the foundation also elected Roger Rigor into our foundation board. So now I present to you our educator for tonight's event, our newly elected board vice president, Roger Rigor. Welcome, Kuya Roger. Magandang gabi sa inyong lahat. Welcome to our first two editions of Wikang Kayumangi. A quick lesson on Tagalog for those who want to see what the basic patterns of the language looks like. In this session, I will attempt to orient folks to the rudiments of conversational Tagalog in the form that is familiar in Manila. My Tagalog is Manila Tagalog, a dialect of Tagalog. So let me explain. And as a reference, I would like to invite you to check out a great uh, article uh, by University of the Philippines, Professor Michael Tan, entitled 181 Languages Through Inquirer.net. Uh, that would be a, a, a link to Inquirer.net. Indeed, the Philippines is blessed not only uh, with more than 7,000 beautiful islands, but of cultures and traditions that are so diverse, and thus these many languages. 
during my growing up years back home, I have referred to these 181 languages as dialects, erroneously, until scholarly researches in the Philippines finally established uh, them as distinct independent languages. Actually, from the researches made by Dr. Tan, there are 185 languages in the Philippines, and four have already become extinct. And I, I sure wish to know what those four languages are. Nevertheless, a variation, uh, a, a dialect is a variation of a language. And for Tagalog, there's a few variations and therefore a few dialects from Bataan, from Batangas, from Bulacan, Lubang, Manila, Puray, Tanay, Payabas. And true to what Dr. Tan observes, there is indeed the possibility that there are, quote, many more dialects waiting to be identified, just like a new animal or plant species. And um, I cannot agree more. Uh, I can attest to this observation as one whose roots are from the Northern Philippines, uh, the Ilocos region. I'm sure some of you there have uh, parents who come from this part of the Philippines. There is the Ilocano of the Norte in Lawang, the Ilocano of the mountain province and Abra, those from the Southern Ilocos region in Vigan, and even those in Pangasinan or La Union, not to mention the Ilocanos from the other side of the mountain in the Cagayan Valley, say in Apari, you know? Uh, so once again, I quote uh, Dr. Tan. For starters, learn about the languages used in the Philippines rather than looking at linguistic diversity in the country as an obstacle to national unity, look at those languages as contributing to a richer national identity. And so here we are today. Uh, we take a brief uh, journey to what I would refer to as the Tagalog gubat, okay? Gubat being the word that means forest. There's a lot to see and learn, uh, but we'll take a quick jo uh, jogging lang. It's just going to be jogging. We're not going to walk. It's a, just an overview and within this uh, next hour. Uh, we will begin our journey with the Filipino alphabet, okay? Just so we get ourselves acquainted with words and accent, and I will ask you to be game enough to uh, flex your Tagalog, dormant Tagalog muscles, okay? By repeating words after me. Say it loud, you know, in the comfort of your home. After all, we are on by ourselves, what? No one will hear you unless, of course, you know how to unmute yourself, all right? So, um, in this process, I'm going to be assisted by our, uh, my co-teacher, I, who will be moving the slides through as we go. Uh, and uh, I encourage folks not only to engage orally, uh, but also do not hesitate to, you know, chat out, uh, uh, write something in the chat to ask questions as I go. Uh, and uh, I will try my best to answer your questions. I mean, after all, I'm a flower flower child and I am still taking, you know, my uh, learning in this uh, technology. So are we ready to go forward to the gubat? And one more thing, a folklore. A, as we told by my Lolo and Lola, when you go through the forest, go straight to where you go or where you're going. All right. Don't be left behind by your group or the capre will get you. Now the capre, according to our elders then, resides in tall trees, okay? The manga or the acacia, waiting to pounce on unsuspecting loafers in the forest. But uh, truth be told, I do think it was an excellent ploy to get us kids home before dark and not to wonder about. So everyone ready? <laughs> so let's begin. And uh, my dear co-teacher, uh, yeah, there we go. The abacada, the very, very bones uh, start of our lesson here tonight. Uh, so say after me, the Tagalog alphabet is uh, no different from the English alphabet, but it's different in some ways. And we'll talk about that. So say after me, we go, ah, ba. Ka, 
da, not da, all right? Da, e, ga, ha, i, la, ma, na, nga, o, pa, ra, sa, ta, na ta, pa, come on now, u, wa, ya. All right. There are some letters that are not in this alphabet. Can you name some of them? And you could put it in the chat, all right? Uh, go ahead. So, um, F, yes, Z, yes. Yes, what else? J, Q, V, yes, X, not there, Jalene, yes. And Z, okay, Zeta. And what is one unique letter? Is Danga, and we'll get to that in a bit. All right, next slide. Let's go, yeah. So in our vowels, it's A, A, E, O, U. There's no long E, no long I, or long A. It's A, as in Ayan. You say Ayan, not Ayan, all right? Come on now. E, as in Ewan. Ewan, good. E, as in Ian. Ian. O, Oto. Oto. And U, as in unan, unan, not unan, okay, because it's you, no, no, unan, all right, let's move on. All right, here we go. That one letter in the alphabet that a lot of our kababayan here in the U.S. have sometimes difficulty saying this, and it's hard. It's the nga word, nga. Okay, so the Tagalog muscle has to come out now. Say the word. Saying the word in English with nang, like song. Say the word song. Now notice where the ng is, song. And now take out the so and just go silently say the ong, ong, okay? Ong, 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 ng, ng. <laughs> Practice. Okay, next slide. We're going really good here. So, we will now say ng with our vowels. You ready? Here we go. Nga. Nge. Ngi. Ngo. Ngu. Okay? Did everybody do okay there? Let's see. I'm hoping people are writing their responses here. So uh, let's see, let's say the word with the NG, bunga, bunga, sunka. Okay, and then some words are actually, uh, there are double consonants in Tagalog, and that would be tangal, banga, Cinco and tingnan, tingnan. All right, everyone doing okay? All right, uh, just just say it. Yeah, you have to really, if you want to uh, uh, learn the the part of uh, this this uh, evening's uh, exercise, it's learning to say it. Okay, let's go to the next one. I. Okay, so we go into the syllabication of certain of Tagalog words, like the word kahapon, which is a word for yesterday. You do not syllabicate it as kahapon or kahapon or kahapon. No, it's kahapon. All right. So, next slide. So here we go. I want you to look at the words and make sure you are uh, able to 
syllabicate these words. The reason I uh, have you uh, do this is because later on you will know, you will learn that uh, correct syllabication will be uh, the, uh, related to accents. All right, and I'll tell you more about that. So let's do it. Tunay. Benta. Alaga. Haligi. Katalinuhan. Kakampi. Now I'll give you a few minutes to do the others without me doing it. And I'll, after a minute, I will say it along with you. Try it. Okay. So let's see. Talumpati. All right, did you get that? Makabansa. And this one has a double A. It should go, and I'm sure some of you got this, and some of you are probably still struggling. That's okay. Kabataan. All right, the double A is not kabataan, no. Kabataan. Okay. And then the last word there with the NG again is sila nga nan. Sila nga nan. All right. Good. All right. Let's go move forward. So in our Tagalog language, there are three symbols to remember. I mean, and these, unfortunately, in literature, in Tagalog literature, you don't find this too often that uh, written Tagalog uh, prose or uh, re reading materials have accents on them. Uh, that's unfortunate, but uh, and it uh, limits people to read it correctly. But in this uh, course tonight, I hope you get to appreciate the accents, the, the, this, the symbols that are put on top of these, these uh, syllables, all right? So the first one is the acute symbol that emphasizes where an accent to a word is, is uh, uh, expressed, okay? So for example, these two words have the same spelling and that is why. So say it butas and the accent is in the first syllable, butas, and then the second one, it's in the second syllable. Butas. See the difference? Butas, as in butas. And there's a difference to that. And that's when your relatives go, their eyebrows go high up like that when you try to say something and it's not the accent that's supposed to be said, all right? Okay, <laughs> so here we go. Grave is the one that goes to the left as opposed to acute that goes to the right. And this denotes a glottal stop for words ending in vowels. And this uh, is only used for one that has a glottal stop, okay? Tisa, uh, you see the glottal stop there? And nisi, yes, uh, yes. <laughs> suka and suka, yes, absolutely. You know, uh, and uh, if, yeah, if you don't say it correctly, you get uh, a raised eyebrow, okay? So again, the, the grave is always going to be put on top of a vowel because it denotes a glottal stop, but it retains the second to the last uh, uh, syllable accent. So, tisa, nisi, okay? All right, and second, uh, next uh, slide. So the third one is called the circumflex. And this is when uh, the accent is to the last and it still has, uh, what is this? Um, the uh, word ends with a vowel. So 
the accent is to the last. So how do you say this with a glottal stop? Sampo. All right, sampo. And nagtampo. You don't say nagtampo. See, it's, it's nagtampo. Okay, sampo. All right, moving on. We are now going to uh, the next slide. The first kind of uh, term that you're going to learn is called malumai. And these are the words that have a second to the last accent. And you see there the, uh, the accent on top of the letter U because it's the second to the last syllable that's always going to be accented. So let's move on. All right. I will say the English word and you will try to say it in the accent. The madumai is again the second to the last. All right. So I will say I will say the English word and you try you say the Tagalog word. And then I will say it too so that you can see if you said it correctly or not. But again, say it, all right? Say it in your own living room or own bedroom or just say it. Okay, here we go. Intelligence. Talino. All right. Talino. Okay. Being truthful. It's katapatan. See that? It's second to the last. Katapatan. Okay. Next one. Knowledge. Karunungan. Okay, karunungan, you see? The second to the last. Always. Parati. Parati, okay? Last one, enemy. Kalaban. Kalaban, all right? Everybody doing okay? All right, just write it in the chat if you're doing okay. Uh, so I know that you're out there doing what I am asking you to do so you can get this. A-okay, very good. Yes, Tess, thank you. Yes, very good. So uh, great, great uh, feedback I'd like to hear. All right, <laughs> but you can also say, wait a minute, Kuya Roger, that's not right. Uh, okay, I will take that too. All right, moving on, let's go. Malumi, okay, malumi. You notice the grave accent on the last, uh, you know, letter there because it ends with a vowel, but the glottal stop, okay? Malumi, okay, meaning it has that glottal, but it has still the second to the last accent, right? But it ends with a vowel. It will always end with a vowel for malumi. And therefore that sign that goes to the left. All right, let's go to the words that are examples of malumi. All right, again, I say the English word and then you say it in the Tagalog word. All right, try it, do it. Native, indigenous. Katutubo. All right, exaggerate the glottal stop. I will always tell my students. Otherwise, you will always be a sellout that you are not a Tagalog speaker, but you will be one when you're done with this series. Katutubo, all right? Not katutubo, no. Katutubo, no. Katutubo. Yes, practice those Tagalog muscles. Greetings. Pagbati, say it, pagbati. Mixed something together, mixed it. Pinaghalo, pinaghalo, all right. Not pinaghalo, no, pinaghalo. Small portion. K 
Kauntik. Kauntik. All right. Everyone okay? Everyone doing okay? Give me the thumbs up. All right. Short. Maiksi. Maiksi. Not maiksi. See the difference? Not maiksi. It has to be maiksi. You say that correctly and you will get a thumbs up. All right. Everybody doing okay? Let's move on. Let's move on. There's quite a few that we have. All right. This one is mabilis, the third one. Mabilis literally means fast. And so the accent to these words in the, are always in the last syllable. Okay. So let's have these words. You guys ready? Let's do it. Okay. It's going to be the last syllable, okay? So it's going to be fast, okay? So continuous, let's hear it. There's going to be a little bit of. Tuloy, tuloy. Tuloy, tuloy. Yes, you can use parati. Parati, uh, there's a question here. Can you use parati in a sentence? Absolutely. Tuloy, tuloy kami parati. We are always going, going all the time. Parati is, what is it? Mabilis, malumi, or malumay? Parati, not parati. Okay? Someone asked a question. So, yes, I'm answering your, your question. It's parati is, I'm going all the time. Kumakain ako parati. All the time, all right? Okay, going back to the list. Jeepney, jeepney. You see how it's spelled? We don't have J, right? So Filipinos are very smart. So they go jeepney, okay? D-Y, that passes, okay? Jeepney. Mabilis, it's not jeepney. No, jeepney. Jail. Kulungan, all right? Kulungan, kulungan, kulungan. Yes, there you go. Kulungan, it's not kulungan, kulungan. Retreated, umatras, umatras. And deafening, deafening. Nakakabingi, nakakabingi. Not nakakabingi or nakakabingi, nakakabingi. I know some of you are having a difficult time, but your Tagalog muscles need to start flexing. All right, everybody doing okay? Everybody doing okay? All right, let's go, let's do it. Next one, maragsa. Maragsa is, again, that circumflex is always going to be in the last syllable in last letter uh yes is nakakabingi the same as nakabingi or is it the first just spelling wrong yes nakakabingi is uh, it's not nakabingi no it's nakakabingi means it's deafening nakabingi is i don't know if there's a word like that but it's nakakabingi all right so Maragsa is always going to have that glottal stop in a vowel at the last, and it's the mabilis is uh, the type that uh, is going to be mabilis, but last accent, and it ends with a vowel. So let's see some words in maragsa. Here we go. Youngest in the family. Okay. You don't say bunso. You say bunso. Bunso. It's not bunso. Okay. Bunso. Gay. Bakla. Bakla. Not bakla. Uh, yeah. <laughs> bakla. All right. That would make it even more authentic. Yeah. We accept it when you say bakla. Yeah. All right. <laughs> bakla. Okay. Went berserk. 
nagwala. Okay? From a bubble. Bumula. And boiled. Kumulo. All right? Kumulo. So those are the four. The four types of words. Uh, could nagwala also mean go missing? Nagwala is to go berserk. To go missing is nawala. Okay. The very, very uh, subtle difference in the letter, but nawala means somebody got, lo got lost. And you'll learn that in a bit because you're going to learn some of these action words. Uh, lost your mind is nagwala. Yes, someone lost his mind, went berserk, nagwala. That too, yes. Very good. Uh, let these questions come in. And that tells me that you are getting yourself crazy over Tagalog in your bedroom or living room or kitchen. <laughs> All, right. All right, moving forward. Accents. Okay, and with the stop both Malumi again, a reminder, Malumi uh, vowels. Okay, so um, let's move on to the next one. Uh, so this is why we need to make sure that you write you you say it in the right way, because in Tagalog there are words that are spelled the same but said in a different accent you get that proverbial raised eyebrow from your lola lolo or auntie or uncle or cousin and they you know you know <laughs> you can relate to what i'm saying and so not unlike in the english language you can say tomorrow or whatever word and and whatever where the accent is it doesn't matter because it's tomorrow 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 right or yeah you know what i'm saying it's still tomorrow or where or well, anyway here we go three uno full puno see that if you say oh look at that beautiful puno nope <laughs> that's why you get the raised eyebrow all right so, us with you. Tayo. To stand. Tayo. Okay. Tomorrow. Bukas. And to open. Or it's open. Bukas. Okay. A tuber kind of vegetable gabi evening gabi that's why don't say magandang gabi po oh where's the gabi all right you don't say greeting magandang gabi when you say we want to say magandang gabi all right all right next one everybody okay all right let's see so some other words that have the same, and I'd, I'd like to go over this, and I would like you to uh, see if you can actually, if you have a paper and pencil, it would be good just to practice writing it down and, and putting where the accent is and what accent there is. And I will tell you what uh, these words uh, mean in terms of having the same spelling, okay? The first one here, Sira, Sira. Sira means the state of not working. Uh, there's something wrong with it. It's broken. Sira. Sira is the expression. Sira. He's Sira. Or somebody, this guy is Sira. Is something's not right. Sira. It's an expression. Okay, and you can use that if you want, <laughs> but be careful. Pico. Pico. Pico is that 
when you, you use for digging, pickaxe, pico. Pico is hopscotch, the game of hopscotch in Tagalog. Kalat. Kalat is uh, the uh, disorderly or scattered. Kalat is the expression again for somebody who's disorderly or unorganized. He's kalat or she's kalat. You're kalat. All right. Saya. Saya. Saya is a type of skirt. Saya is happiness. Couple more here. Basa, basa. Basa, basa. Basa is the uh, root word for to read, and basa is wet. Uh, next one is pito, pito. Pito, I didn't say pito, right? Pito. Pito. I didn't say pito. I said pito. Pito is whistle. Pito is seven. All right. Last two. Pico. 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 That's the same word there, up there. I just realized. <laughs> okay. The last one is baka, 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 baka is cow, baka is maybe, baka umalis na sila, maybe they left already. All right, everybody okay with with this? Why it's important? Uh, that's part of the exercise here. I hope you were able to get that. So let us, uh, I would like to push uh, your envelope here. Uh, go ahead and let's see the next one. I would like you now to read on your own and see if you can actually uh, put into play your, what you have learned about accents. This is from the great Malayan hero novelist, Dr. Jose Rizal. Is quote, those who do not look back from where they came from will not arrive where they are to go. So let's see if you can read it in the right way. I will give you a few moments here to just read it. Read it, try it. <laughs> yes, there's so many syllables. I know. But just, yeah, just try it. And do it per syllable. Ma, who no. You don't have to go, all right? So, okay, here we go. Ang Hindi. Marunong lumingon sa pinanggalingan ay hindi makakarating sa paroroonan. And try it faster. Ang hindi marunong lumingon sa pinanggalingan ay hindi makakarating sa paroroonan. Very good. I thank you for trying. I appreciate it that you tried. And uh, that's the whole idea behind, you know, the accent. It's, it's very important. You hear the lyrical part. Whew, yes. <laughs> Woo, yes. Try it. And the important thing is, as they say, get into the water 
and forget that it's cold. All right, here we go. So we're going to go move forward. We have a few more, yeah, we have a few more uh, minutes here. So the next step here, now that you know how to say the words, it's now time for you to get to know pronouns, the basic pronouns, okay? So here we are, I would refer to this as pronoun one. And so uh, singular and plural, and there are certain nuances about our pronouns that I'm sure some of you are probably aware of, but uh, then maybe not. Okay, so here they are, ako, ikaw, ka, siya, kami, tayo, kayo, sila. <laughs> well, breaking your tongue. All right. Hey, you're going to have that Tagalog muscle ready to go. <laughs> All right. So those are the basic pronouns. Let's move on. Here we go. Also, I would like you now to be familiar with two formats in Tagalog. It's basically called, basically called format one, where the action word precedes the pronoun. In format two, what we call the I format, is the pronoun plus the I and the action word. And I is equivalent to the linking verb is R, okay? And uh, usually uh, in conversational Tagalog, at least in Manila, uh, it's the format one that is most usually uh, expressed. Uh, in format two, it's usually uh, in the written form, okay? More formal, format two could be more formal. All right, so that's, those are the, the two uh, formats in, in saying things, okay? So let's move on to the next. Okay, for the first, uh, ako, uh, the I, ako, you could say in format one and format two. Ako, kumakain ako, action ako. Action kami, action tayo. Ako, kami, tayo, I, action, all right? Just just look at the, the pattern here. I just wanted you to check the pattern on, on the left side of the screen, all right? Now, the uniqueness of the language in the Tagalog pronoun is that the we is very specific. Right, you can see there. Kami refers to us without you. Go away, all right? We say kami, all right? Tayo refers to us with you, tayo, okay? So when you say action word tayo, means you're, you're referring to the person you're talking to is with us, okay? Kain tayo, let's eat. All right, don't say, and, and it's, see how different it is in English language? That's one of the uniqueness of our Tagalog. So let's move on. Okay, ako, and these are examples of the past, present, future, I and mean, I'm adding on some action words into the pronoun. All right, then read along with me, okay? Kumain ako. And that's format one. Kumakain ako. Kumakain kami. All right? Kakain tayo. That's the future. And again, that's format one. You can see the action precedes the pronoun. Now, on the second one, on the format, to sleep is to tulog. It's a na verb. You see, I've already already put there the kind of word or the kind of actions. It's either the um verb or the na verb. And we'll get to that in a few minutes. We're almost done. Ako ay natulog. I slept. Kami ay natutulog. We are sleeping. Tayo ay matutulog. We will be sleeping. Okay? You see that? So you you get used to this. And we're, again, we're just going through this just to give you an idea of the language. I didn't, I don't expect you to, after this, you'll be perfectly 
ready, uh, of course. Uh, okay, next one. You, format one, action word ka, kayo. Format two, action word, uh, ikaw, I, action word. But notice here, ikaw and ka again are two singular because the pronoun ka is used in the V, in the action pronoun only. It's only used in format one. And ikaw is used only in format two. Yeah, that's a pretty, uh, a lot there. So you say, I'll give you the example. Let's go to the next one. All right, here we go. Again, to eat, look at the format one. Kuma in ka. Right? Kuma ka in ka. You are eating. Kaka in kayo. You will be eating. But that's in format one. And so it's only using the pronoun ka. It doesn't use the pronoun ikaw because ikaw is in format two. All right? To sleep, ikaw ay natulog. You slept. Ikaw ay natutulog. You are sleeping. Kayo ay matutulog. Right? So, ikaw in ka, you don't say kumaka in ikaw. And I hear that sometimes. That's not right. Okay? Okay? And then finally in the last. Third person, siya. Siya and sila can be used in both format one and format two. And again, the uniqueness of our language is that we were way ahead in the race of this gender issue. There is no gender he or she in Tagalog. That is why your parents and I go to that same mistake too. I sometimes refer to a, a gender wrongly by calling somebody a he when it's supposed to be a she or she when it's supposed to be a he. And that is why it's embedded. There's no gender in the Philippines. So let's see, get some uh, examples here. All right, again, to eat. Kuma in siya. Kuma ka in siya. Kaka in sila. All right. And then in format two, I'm sure you're picking up on this. Siya ay natulog. Siya ay natutulog. Sila ay matutulog. Okay? All right. And the next one, now we go to the action word. We got to the pronoun. All right? Yes, sha and siya. The correct way to say it is siya. Yes. Not sha, because that's Americanizing it. Okay, now we go to the action. We were in the pronoun. Now we go to the action words. And I said that there are two forms of action words, the na, nag, and the um form. Natulog or nagsimba. And then the um form, uminom, right? And why that, how, why was it uh, some words are na, nag, and why some are um, uh, that is the mystery of the universe. I really don't know. I still have to know why some words are um, some, one, some words are not, not. But we'll eventually, hopefully, find out. OK, so let's go into the na, the format on the na. Here are some words in na. I would like you to see how it is conjugated in past, present, and future, if you can see the pattern. So the past for to sleep is natulog. Present is natutulog. And future, matutulog. Can you see the pattern? And the, and the root word is tulog. Just, you don't have to, you don't have to, you know, remember this, but I just want you to see the pattern. Let's go to the next one. One more example. Lungkot, okay? Nalungkot, nalulungkot. Malulungkot. What do you think is the pattern for na? 
in past, present, and future. Okay. You probably notice, yes, first syllable repeated, yes. And the present, yes. And then the na and the ma, right? Determines whether it's future or present. Okay. So here we go. The consonant changes depending on the first letter of the word. Uh, let's see. Let's see the, the pattern. Here we go. Na plus root. Na and the first syllable and the root for present. And then for future, ma, first syllable, and then the root. Okay? That's the pattern for the na. Let's get some examples and you'll get to know this. Next one. So, again, I have there, na root, na first syllable root, future, ma first syllable root. Let's go ahead and see if you can conjugate at least one. To take a bath, how do you say it? Ligo. To see or to be seen, kita. And to get angry, galit. Galit, galit, I'm sorry, galit. Let's see if you can actually conjugate at least one. Okay. At least one. Magagalit. Yes. Yes. For future. Okay. Magagalit. I will get mad, yes. Magagalit, I, magagalit, ako. Remember, format one. I will get mad. Magagalit, ako. Ako, I, magagalit. See it? And that's why you can actually now make your own expressions. Okay, let's go the conjugation. <laughs> yes, so makikita is I will see, I will be seen, yes. Makikita, yes. There you go, you're getting it. So, naliligo, naligo, maliligo. Okay? Nakita, nakikita, makikita. And galit, nagalit, nagagalit, magagalit. And then adding that to the, to the pronouns, magagalit ako. I will get angry, yes. Naliligo siya. Okay? You get it? All right. We're getting some stuff here. Okay, let's move on to the next. The nag. The nag is also has the same, uh, the nag verbs has the same pattern as the na. That's why they're together. Except that it's down nag, not na. All right? You got that. Let's do it. Let's go to the next one. So, to walk is naglakad, right? To cook, nagluto. So, can you say they are walking or you are cooking? Going back to the, of course, your pronouns. But because I don't know if some of you took note of the pronouns, but it it's, it's going to be a challenge to remember that and I didn't mean to I didn't mean to for you to remember that in a quick one but now you can say naglalakad see sila sila ay naglalakad you are cooking ikaw ay nagluluto Nagluluto ka. Cool? All right. By the way, if people want to have, you know, these notes, we'll try to work it out so that folks who are interested can get some of these in text form. And I do have copies of that. All you have to do is let us know. 
and I could give you all this. All right, let's move on for the in, in the interest of time. So, in the Americanization of Tagalog in Manila, if you don't have the Tagalog nagko computer, it's in the nag form. All right, it's in the nag format. So we'll shop, magsha shopping, and that's in the future tense. All right. Nag computer, nag Facebook, it's repeating the first syllable. Nag text, nag go grocery or nag grocery shopping. Okay? And that's mostly all English words that makes it, you know, vernacular is usually in the nag form. All right. Remember that. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. I think my, yeah. Right. My, All right, so let's move on to the next one. So now we go to the um verbs, and this is the last set of verbs, the um, and see if you can again see the the uh, the pattern: kumain to eat, kumakain, and kakain. It's different from the na na. Okay, so. Kumain, kumakain, kakain. Look at the, they pay attention to the root word. Let's go to the next. Now, this one starts with in a vowel to groove, in duck. So, umindak, umi in duck, e in duck. You see that? Umindak, umi indak, i indak. Okay, so there's a, uh, this is the, the 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 action word that's got that's a little bit more uh, what is it more difficult than the the first two. Let's move on to the next one. Conjugating the um action word with a consonant uh, letter that starts it, okay? The um is placed between the first two letters of the first uh, syllable. Like in tayo, look at that. Tayo, you put um in the middle of T and A, which is the first syllable. So it becomes tumayo, okay? And then the present, you've, it's the it's the first two syllables of your past tense and the root word for your present tense. Tuma tayo. Tuma tayo. And then the future of um is just repeating the first syllable. Ta tayo. Okay. Ta tayo. All right. So let's do some practices here. To the next uh, slide. Yes, there you go. With a consonant letter, where do you put the um in between the first two letters? So it's gonna read. Yes, kuma in. Say it, kuma in. And the the pre uh, present, the first two syllables of the past tense is kuma, and then the root. Kumakain. And of course, the future. Kakain. All right. To sing. What's the first two letters of the first syllable? Ka. And where do you put the um in between? So the past tense of kanta to sing. Kumanta, right, kumanta. In the present tense, kumakanta, kumakanta. 
and the future tense, which is easy, just repeating the first syllable. Kakanta. Kakanta kami. Ako ay kakanta. All right? And bisita. Bumisita. Bumi bisita. And bibisita. Very good. Those are when it starts with a consonant, the first syllable. Let's see if it starts with a vowel. Second one. Let's move to the second slide. Okay. The root word is alis. All right. Because it starts with a vowel, the um starts it. Um alis. The um goes to the first syllable. Um malis, and that's the past tense. The present is you just repeat um and then the first letter. Uma alis. Right? Uma alis. And then of course the future always repeat the first letter, which is the vowel, which is the first syllable. A alis. Okay. Uma alis. Umalis. All right. Let's do some exercise. Let's see if you can do the atras. Umatras. Uma atras. A atras. Okay. And then exena. Ume exena, ume exena, e exena, yes. And then asicaso, uma asicaso, uma asicaso, a asicaso, okay? I will watch over you, a asicaso. Kita. And uh, ikaw ay aasikaso. Right? All right. Let's move on. I hope that we're going really fast here, but, but these are action words, again, that uh, I would like to make you start doing on a daily basis. The only way you could actually begin to appreciate Tagalog is when you start saying it on a daily basis. So, Trabajo is not an easy, uh, well, it's not a difficult word because it's like Spanish. Okay, it's a nag verb. Kain, we already have that. It's an um verb. Okay, let's, let's move forward. And so practice. Uh, na, there's a na word that means now already. So when you say kumain na ako, uh, I already ate. And at means End. Kumain at natulog na ako. So let's see. Let's do, see if people can do this quickly. Can somebody come up? They ate and slept already. Let's see. And I have the uh, translation there. And just practice. I, I don't expect you to, to take this out and be done with it and you're perfect, all right? I just want you to go and see if you're able to do at least just one, okay? I'll give you a, a, a bit of a minute here. Okay. Yes. Kumain at natulog na sila. Yes, very good. Anyone more? Come on. Yes, that was very good, Dean. You're learning it. <laughs> You're flying. All right. Okay. All right. So let's move on to the next one. Write and express the statements in English. See if you can do that. I'll read it. Nagcomputer kami. Nagco-computer kami. 
matutulog na tayo. Right? Umalis na sila. Kakain at magsya-shopping kami. All right? You see how all this hopefully you begin to see the pattern. And that's all it is. It's pattern. And there are words and I, I I'm sure some of you have I I hope you got the worksheets that go with this that you can now do the conjugation of the different na, nag, and um verbs. So today, we went through a lot. Abacada and the alpabeto, the accents, similar words. We went through pronouns and then the verbs and then format one and format two statements. You guys were great. So next meeting, we're gonna go into the connective of time and place. We're gonna do descriptive words and how this connects. And then we're going to go into objects of action. We're going to be a little more deeper into the gubat. None of you were eaten by the capre. And thank you so much. You have been great. I really appreciate it. And I hope in the one hour that we had together that you were able to pick up at least one. All right? And you don't have any more that raised eyebrow from your Lolo and Lolo. Okay? Salamat po. Maraming salamat. Ang inyong lingkod, si Roger po. Magandang gabi sa inyong lahat. Thank you. Good night. Uh, maraming salamat for the lesson. Um, it was great to learn some of the basics um, and get some practice. I grew up speaking Tagalog and Ilocano with my family, but um, once I started elementary school, my parents were discouraged to continue speaking to me in our native dialects. Um, so while I can still understand both dialects, I've definitely lost the practice. So it really get good to go through some of those longer syllable words, um, even and embarrass myself <laughs> in the middle of my apartment alone. But uh, I'm very excited to continue learning and practicing Tagalog with you, Kuya, and uh, hopefully all of our participants here tonight um, who will hopefully come to the next session. Um, and I want to invite all of you to learn more about the Foundation for Philippine Progress um, and how to get involved because there's definitely a place for you in our work regardless of your time or capacity. Um, you can follow us on social media at Philippine Progress on both Facebook and Instagram. Become a partner for progress at the link um, that will be provided in the chat. And this involvement ranges from being part of our mailing list um, to attending our future events, volunteering, donating, or hosting a fundraiser. Um, you can also donate on our website. Uh, even the smallest amount makes a world of difference for Kababayan back home. Um, and if you make a minimum donation of $5 um, tonight, your name will be added to our drawing for the following, um, for our webinar session this coming Saturday, where we'll be going under, over the untold story of the Battle of Betsang Pass. I know a lot of you have also um, submitted donations during the, uh, during the session. Um, and your names have been added to the drawing for tonight. Um, and so we hope you join us for um, our future webinars, and I'll pass it on to Ai Kalalo to draw a name for the prizes tonight.
Thank you, Ai. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Thank you for joining us. Thank you again to our board members, our staff team, and all uh, of you, our participants for tonight. Thank you, Kuya Roger, for such an educational and entertaining Tagalog lessons. Thank you again to Erna Cruz Louis of the American Center of Philippine Arts for donating the original Rondalia music, which you heard playing in the background and which you will hear again as you leave the room tonight. Please join us for the rest of the events in our seven part webinar series. It will be every Thursday and Saturday for the next three weeks. This Saturday, as you see on the screen there, we will be having Battle of Bisang Pass, the untold story of the Filipino guerrillas. And next Thursday, we will have the part two of this Tagalog learning and appreciation class with Kuya Roger. Please visit tinyurl.com forward slash iheartph to see the rest of the events in the series and to register for them if you haven't already done so. We would like to seek any feedback you have on this webinar and to hear any topics you'd be interested in for future events. This seven part series is just the launch of Philippines is in the Heart. We intend to continue this online programming for the rest of the year. So again, we'd love to hear from you. Please give us your feedback and we hope to see you for the rest of our series. Magandang gabi at salamat po sa inyong lahat. Good night.